as Germany pierced through the Soviet Union's Eastern Front in an ambitious attempt to take Moscow in the summer of 1941, it suddenly found itself in a significant crisis. The thinly spread Wehrmacht was being severely crippled by the powerful T-34 Soviet tanks. German anti-tank armament was proving worthless against the enemy's armor, and their own vehicles were struggling when put up against the Soviet medium tanks. If the Germans did not come up with a solution soon, their entire operation would be jeopardized. Thus, the Heereswaffenamt commissioned the immediate development of a new tank destroyer. However, Germany's military manufacturing industry was depleted, and if they were to build a new tank hunter, it would have to come out of what they already had. General Heinz Guderian, a pioneer of the Blitzkrieg tactics and the father of the Panzer Division, fervently opposed the idea. But despite his disapproval, the Germans would use the hulls of the old Panzer IVs to build the Jagdpanzer IV tank destroyer. Time was running out, and as the hastily developed Jagdpanzer IV entered the battlefield, the world waited to see if the unique-looking vehicle would be able to tackle the mighty Soviet behemoth. The Crisis Low, swift, solidly armed and armored, the Soviet T-34s stretched across the battlefronts of the Eastern Front in increasing numbers as the war waged on, becoming a symbol of Soviet armored might. In their dark green or whitewash winter camouflage, the tanks first offered isolated but tenacious resistance to the Germans, halting their attacks at the gates of Moscow, Stalingrad, and Kursk, before finally taking the Red Army's flag to the streets of Berlin. The T-34 and KD-1 presented an abrupt and significant threat to the Germans, who used to rely heavily on armored vehicles. And despite early reports indicating that Russia possessed an advanced tank design that outclassed their own, the T-34 came as a complete surprise to the Germans, who didn't expect to encounter so many units on the Eastern Front. In 1941, almost nothing in the Wehrmacht's arsenal could break the T-34, and the following year would see a host of new equipment stitched together to meet the Soviet armor. Germany entered the war in the east, armed with the 37mm L45 Pac-36 as their primary anti-tank weapon. But just as it happened in France, its performance was highly deficient, and the introduction of the T-34 and KV-1 only aggravated the issue. The German troops continually faced the utter ineffectiveness of the 37mm Pac-36 and 50mm Pac-38 they carried as anti-tank armament and were forced to improvise, wielding any weapon they could think of to stop the new Russian tanks conducting impromptu tactics that seemed alien to the methodical German forces. New weapons were clearly necessary, but Germany lacked essential wartime resources, and there wasn't time to develop a new anti-tank solution from scratch. What they did have was a vast amount of Soviet captured field guns and a hefty amount of stored obsolete armored vehicles, so the reasonable option would be to mount a powerful Russian gun on a readily available older chassis. The concept was straightforward. In its initial assault on the Soviet Union, Germany had captured numerous high-velocity 75mm and 88mm weapons that were more than capable of destroying the fearsome T-34 tank. However, these weapons lacked the necessary mobility to keep up with other armored vehicles, but installing the guns on the hulls of old Panzer units could provide a fast and reliable solution. Several designs were produced, from the Panzerjäger and its successors to the Martyr family of tank destroyers. All of these options drew the German military closer to what they needed, but they still presented many shortcomings due to their low speed, light armor, and insufficient firepower. Consequently, on May 18, 1942, the German Minister for Arms and Armament requested a new self-propelled anti-tank gun from the Heereswaffenamt, specifically designed to counter the Soviet armor. Guderian's Duck As a tank destroyer, the most essential requisite was formidable firepower. Prior experience had proved that anything smaller than 75mm weapons was ineffective against the Soviet armored threat, and thus the 75mm L-48 Pac-39 was chosen for the new Jagdpanzer. Like its towed Pac-40 equivalent, 
The Pak-39 was capable of defeating both the T-34 and KV-1, using either traditional or tungsten core shells. But even though more effective performance could have been achieved with the 88mm family of weapons, they turned out to be way too heavy for the hybrid Panzer III IV or Panzer 38 hulls being considered for the project. The Panzer IV's hull had proven remarkably effective when it was adapted to serve as an assault gun, and it was chosen as the base for the new vehicle. With a reliable hull and a powerful gun, it was now time to fit the vehicle with adequate armor plates for its required purpose. A new configuration allowed the adoption of sloped armor plates, and the front of the vehicle was mounted with 60mm armor at a slope of 45 degrees, giving protection comparable to over 80mm of vertical armor. Meanwhile, the armor was quickly upgraded to 80mm, which yielded protection similar to 113mm of vertical defense. The Jagdpanzer IV would be developed into several different iterations, with the main difference being the gun mounted on the hull. One of them used an STUK-42, while a later version would showcase a powerful 7.5cm L70 KWK-42. The ultimate prototype of the Jagdpanzer IV was presented to Adolf Hitler in December of 1943, and production began in January 1944, with the Pak-39 L-48 armed variant continuing in production until November. On the other hand, production of the Pak-42 L-70 armed variations started in August and lasted until April of 1945. The tank destroyer was built despite the fierce opposition of Heinz Guderian, who, as a high-ranking officer of the Panzer Battalions, the Inspector General of the Panzer Truppen, and one of the architects of Blitzkrieg Tactics, was as influential in German tank design as an individual could be. Guderian believed the entire project was unnecessary. In his opinion, the Sturmgeschütz III performed more adequately on the Eastern Front, and making a new tank destroyer using Panzer IV hulls would only divert vital resources from the production of the Panzer IV. It was due to Heinz Guderian's infamous opposition to the vehicle that the troops would come to call it Guderian's Duck. Combat Service Despite being developed to counter threats as early as 1941 and then deployed as late as 1944, the Jagdpanzer IV showcased outstanding performance and reliability as a counter to Allied tanks during the final stages of World War II. The novel anti-tank vehicle served in the Panzer and SS Panzer divisions, battling against Western Allies on Normandy's beaches, in the Battle of the Bulge, encountering Soviet tanks and troops on the Eastern Front. SS Oberscharfuhrer Rudolf Roy was a famous Jagdpanzer IV ace, who masterfully took advantage of the vehicle's strengths and successfully destroyed dozens of Allied tanks while serving for the 12th SS Panzerjäger Battalion of the 12th SS Panzer Division. Roy would lose his life at the hands of an American sniper while peeking out of his Jagdpanzer IV on December 17, 1944, during the Ardennes Offensive in Belgium, the last major German offensive on the Western Front. The Jagdpanzer IV would leave a mark in World War II history as an extraordinarily successful tank destroyer due to its low profile, precise gun, and thick armor configurations. Still, it performed dreadfully when used as a substitute for tanks or assault guns to support infantry. Alas, Germany was forced to continually use the Jagdpanzer IV as a tank towards the end of the war, as the badly depleted German armored units attempted to hold back the Allied incursions into Germany and Eastern Europe and more often than not, there were no other vehicles available. Ultimately, the Jagdpanzer IV achieved its intended purpose of effectively countering the weight of the Soviet T-34. However, by the time it was deployed, it was too late for the vehicle to make a real difference in the outcome of the war, and they were unable to stop the Red Army in their vengeful counteroffensive after the Battle of Stalingrad. Still, the war's conclusion wasn't the end of the Jagdpanzer IV, as many units were transferred to the Romanian army. While there, they were renamed the TAS T4 and were used until 1950, when they were finally obsolete. Many of these vehicles have been recently unearthed in areas where significant battles occurred during World War II, and some of them have been or are still being restored to be added to the wide selection of European museums. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more warfare-related content.
And for more history-inspired videos, check out our other Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be notified when new material comes out. Stay tuned. <laughs>